Hello and welcome to WEBN Political Pulse. I'm Benjamin Levine. And I'm Anthony Labruto. Here are the top stories in politics. Roberta McCain, mother of the late Navy veteran and Senator John McCain, died on Monday night. Her daughter-in-law, Cindy McCain, announced her passing on Twitter. She was 108 years old. McCain was known for her stoic spirit and firmness as a mother. She actively appeared in the campaign trail on behalf of her son's 2008 presidential bid. Roberta McCain joins her husband Jack, her son John, and daughter Sandy. The Senate has begun its Supreme Court nomination hearings for Judge Amy Coney Barrett. The judge was questioned on key issues such as gun rights, abortion, and the Affordable Care Act. The Republican Party have both a majority on the Judiciary Committee and the full Senate chamber. The Democratic Party used the first day to highlight the stakes of how the nominee would influence the new Supreme Court, both positively and negatively. The Republican senators showcased the positives of adding a young woman to the Supreme Court bench. The Senate committee is expected to cast their votes next Thursday. Donald Trump has returned to his campaign trail. Just 10 days after being hospitalized for COVID-19, the president held a rally in Central Florida. Trump told the crowd he felt better, strong and better than ever before, with him even saying he wanted to, quote, kiss everyone. I went through it. Now they say I'm immune. I can feel, I feel so powerful. I'll walk into that audience. Experts say this region will prove critical for the election in the key battleground state. 7,000 people attended the rally. The White House medical team has stated that the president tested negative on the consecutive days and is no longer contagious. Now, let's go to our White House correspondent, Sam Nevis. What do you have for us, Sam? Thank you, Benjamin. The Commission on Presidential Debates officially canceled the second presidential debate. This was due to President Trump rejecting the idea of a virtual debate. President Trump accused the Commission of giving an advantage to the Democratic candidate Joe Biden with this decision. Both campaigns agreed that the, that the last debate will be in person. This debate is scheduled to happen on October 22nd in Nashville. Democratic presidential candidate Joe Biden refused to answer if he will pack the Supreme Court if he wins the presidential election. He told a reported that voters do not deserve to know and that they will find out only after the election. Both Biden and his running mate Kamala Harris have previously refused to answer if they are intending to add extra seats to the Supreme Court. Several Democrats have stated in the past the court should be expanded. 56% of voters have said they are better off under the Trump administration. According to a new Gallup poll, the voters stated, stated that, they will, that they are better now than they were four years ago with the Obama administration. Only 32% of them said that like, their situation is worse now than it was four years ago. Despite this, former Vice President Joe Biden remains the front runner and the favorite to win the presidency. A poll shows that, that the former Vice President is leading by 11 points and he has 78% chance of winning the election. Anthony, back to you. Thanks, Sam. Coming up next, a recap of Boston's eviction rally that took place this past weekend and Trump's new stance on the second stimulus check. We'll be right back. When I was your age, I was just like you, fascinated by stars. <sighs> but now I get to search for life in the universe. And who knows, maybe life is looking for us too. So we're like aliens to them? Yeah. Does anyone want to be a scientist now? I do. Awesome. We need more girls in STEM. Maybe we can find aliens. Hello and welcome back to WEBN Political Pulse. Homeowners and rental tenants at risk of eviction and foreclosure rallied on the Boston Common Sunday afternoon. One in three Massachusetts renter households are at risk of eviction once this moratorium ends. And this is absolutely unacceptable. People are facing housing insecurity, food insecurity. They're losing their loved ones. We can't let people go homeless during this crisis. The rally was in protest to force lawmakers to address what the people claim is a, quote, looming eviction crisis, end quote. The state's eviction and foreclosure moratorium is set to expire on October 17 with no action replacing it. 
Protesters want lawmakers to pass the guaranteed housing stability bill, which will prevent any evictions for another year. Boston Mayor Marty Walsh has announced a housing stability pledge that prevents evictions once the state moratorium ends. Elizabeth Warren is warning Democratic voters not to take poll results for granted. While campaigning in New Hampshire for Democratic candidate Joe Biden, the Massachusetts senator told a socially distanced crowd, quote, We've got to leave nothing behind in the locker room. Nobody wants to wake up on November 4th to bad news and think, gee, I could have done a little bit more, end quote. This statement referenced Trump's surprise victory in the 2016 election, while multiple polls had Clinton in the lead. Right now, Biden is, in the, is leading slightly in nationwide polls, but that doesn't mean anything until November 3rd. The California Republican Party is facing questions over their use of unofficial ballot box collections in the state. Reports of the unofficial ballot collection previously circulated but were confirmed yesterday by the California Secretary of State, Alex Padilla. In a statement to the Orange County Register, Padilla reminded officials that unofficial ballot boxes designed to look like the real ones are both misleading to voters and illegal. The group charged with plotting to kidnap the Michigan governor also dis discussed kidnapping Virginia Governor Ralph Northam. FBI agent Richard Trask testified in court Tuesday that both plots were due to their COVID-19 orders. The alleged scheme was first hatched in a social media group and further developed in the basement of a vacuum repair shop. It included plans to overthrow several state governments who were believed by perpetrators to be in violation of the U.S. Constitution. Of the 13 accused, six have been charged federally with conspiracy to kidnap, and the other seven associated with the paramilitary group Wolverine Watchmen have been charged by the state, Michigan Attorney General Dan Nessel announced. This situation is still being criminally investigated. White House economics advisor Larry Kudlow announced Donald Trump is now backing a revised second stimulus package. This would include personal stimulus checks for Americans and aid for the airline industry. The position changes from slightly earlier this week when President Trump announced limited stimulus checks, $25 billion for airlines and $135 billion for small business loans. Economists warn that no fiscal stimulus will dampen recovery efforts as businesses are still having to lay off workers due to the coronavirus. Stay tuned for our international news segment and a look at what we think will be happening with the upcoming presidential election. We'll be right back. One in three adults has pre-diabetes. That means it could be you, your dog walker, on your lap. your cat jogger. With early diagnosis, pre-diabetes can be reversed. Take the risk test at doihaveprediabetes.org. Welcome back. The top oppositional challenger in the Belarusian presidential election threatened to call a nationwide strike. The challenger states that, the, that unless the current president announces his resignation, protests will continue. Belarus has faced mass protests since the beginning of August, when President Alexander Lukashenko released, received a sixth term in office. He has ruled Belarus for 26 years and is often referred to as the last dictator of Europe. The leader of the Belarusian opposition threatened that if President Lukashenko does not resign in the next 13 days, the workers will go on strike and the peaceful protests will resort to violence. The European Union supported a plan to impose sanctions on Russian military intelligence officials. This comes after the poisoning of Kremlin critic Alexei Navalny. The German and French government made this proposal at an EU meeting in Luxembourg. The Kremlin has denied any involvement in the poisoning even after finding Novichok, a Soviet-era nerve agent in Navalny's body. Western governments and NATO have said Russia has to help in the investigations or face consequences. The Pentagon has said that the withdrawal of more troops from Afghanistan will depend on the Taliban reducing violence and advancing peace talks. This comes after President Donald Trump said all U.S. forces should be home by Christmas. Chairman General Mark Milley noted that U.S. troop levels have dropped from 12,000 to 4,500. Milley also stated that future drawdowns will be, quote, determined by the president. The presidential election is a short 21 days away. This road to the nomination has been unlike any other, especially in the midst of a global pandemic. Benjamin, how do you feel about the upcoming election? More specifically, how do you think the rest of the campaigns for both nominees will play out, especially now that the second debate was canceled? Well, Anthony, as Elizabeth Warren so duly warned, despite Biden leading in the polls, we could very well see a Trump victory come November 3rd. 
However, with mail-in ballots, what election day could turn into election week and election month, we could end up with, and with the appointment of Judge Amy Coney Barrett to the Supreme Court, we could very well see a situation play out similar to Al Gore or George Bush or something far worse. Yeah, and I, th I think it's also kind of important to note the, uh, the election battle shaping up, you know, like we saw in Texas and then one shade map going to be in Pennsylvania, the, the actual state politics of the general election. And I think it's going to be interesting if a case is brought before the Supreme Court, what that ruling is going to look like, and if uh, Amy Comey Barrett will recuse herself from any election cases. And thank you for joining us on WEBM Political Pulse. For more news stories, visit webn.tv or visit our YouTube channel at webn.tv. Thank you. I'm Anthony Labrugo. And I'm Benjamin Levine. Have a great night.